Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan and I am a homeschool mama to six and today I'm going to show you a tour of our homeschool space. Now today's video is actually a collaboration with my friend Tony over at Our Thrifty Homeschool. I absolutely love Tony. She has so many great tidbits in regards to homeschooling and life, but I really, really love her like thrifting content. It's always really awesome to see all the good deals and finds that she has. So thank you, Tony, for hosting this collab today. And make sure that you guys check out the playlist below because there are several other homeschool mamas who are sharing their homeschool rooms and spaces as well. I always find it super helpful to see how others organize their homeschool and how they make it work in their home and for their family. I like to glean ideas from others to see if maybe it would streamline ours a little bit as well. Now, I have been a homeschool mom. This is our 10th year of homeschooling, which is crazy to think about. And our homeschool started when I had four little ones all under the age of five and we sat around our little kitchen table in our little 900 square foot two bedroom condo and we had like this little homeschool corner set up and it was, I was so proud of that little corner and it was so functional and perfect for the season that we were in. We homeschooled in that house for a few years before moving to where we are now and I was really excited about moving to this house because because I had a designated room for our homeschool. However, it was downstairs and I am a person that thrives in natural light. And for that reason, plus several other reasons, we just found ourselves coming upstairs and gathering around the kitchen table, hanging out on the couches and cuddling together to do school. And so we transitioned that room into the main parts of our house. And so that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today is just how we make our little homeschool space function. This is what we have found works absolutely the best for us and our family. And I hope that you find something helpful um, in this tour of our space. All right, so I am going to show you what this room looks like. So this is our front living room and dining room. We also have a family room, but we don't normally school in there. But I'm just gonna kind of pan around so you guys can see what the space looks like as a whole. This is a very raw and real homeschool space tour because we just had a birthday party for my daughter. So as you can see, the table and banner are still there and her new bed. But this gives you perspective into the room and space that we use on a daily basis for school. So we utilize the couch area a lot. And of course we utilize the table area a lot for school. And so I have found that this type of kind of hybrid space, I guess, where it's a living room, dining room, works really, really well. Before, if you have seen my homeschool space tour from last year, this was half the size, okay? So I had this long one downstairs and was using it as a bookshelf and decided that it would be much more useful up here since I went from homeschooling four to five kids this year. And so we switched those out. So this is now up here and I'll show you more about that in a second, but let's travel over here first. So this is like our morning Tom basket, our morning basket, book basket, whatever you wanna call it. This stuff gets switched out depending on what we are currently reading as read alouds or utilizing for Bible reads or anything like that. This shelf right here beside, I have kind of designated for Lily and Noah for kindergarten and preschool stuff. So right here is Lily's notebook, her little morning notebook that she uses for um, gentle and classical primer. And then any of the books that we more than likely will be using for her school this year. And then this down here is just like these little letter activities. Where's Waldo? A clock puzzle, please and air rods, pattern blocks, all that kind of stuff that they either use for activities that I need them to do or they can utilize it as something kind of more educational to do while I'm working with the other kiddos. So that's what that is right there. 
And I really like that it's kind of separated from the rest of the space. So I know that all of the kindergarten and preschool stuff goes in this area. So this right here is the bulk of where we organize our homeschool. Obviously this is more for aesthetic value. <laughs> And my clock doesn't even work, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed that in past videos, but I need to replace the batteries. Okay, so this is something new for us. And as you can see, I haven't even completely utilized it yet. We are starting our third week of school this week. And so I have hopes and dreams for this. We have been using it, though. So the manners, virtue, um, all of that kind of stuff goes along with Lily's gentle and classical primer stuff. But then I was like, you know what? Let's do a memory board for all of our subjects. So it's really quick to go over. But in the mornings when we have our morning meetings, morning time, whatever you want to call it, we just quickly, if we're doing history that day, we'll go through what we learned the last time. I just wrote it down in these post-it notes. But from now on, I'm actually going to be using just um, index cards and writing like specific um facts or things like that that need to be remembered from the previous lesson and we can go over it same with science also our catechism and our verse for the week so all of those things are also in our morning menus which are down there as well but that's what that is and the next thing is this was just the perfect spot for our little faithopedia from Not Consume Ministries. This is part of our Bible this year, and we are absolutely loving it. It is excellent. Um, it's just a great way to start really instilling apologetics in your kids. Um, and then right here are different Bible resources that we have used or are using throughout the year. And then my one of my children uses All About Reading, and we keep that right there. Okay, so this square right here is actually our read-aloud basket. So some of these are family read-alouds, but some of them are the readers that go with the sunlight readers and also readers for my oldest for his curriculum this year. And so all of those we keep right here. Uh, and this is the folder that has the sunlight readers pacing guide in it. Down here underneath, we have our science and history shelf. So this is where I keep my oldest and the rest of my kids' apology of science and notebooks. And then all of this goes with our Biblio plan history right here. And that's where we keep that curriculum. And then here we have a few more of the read alouds that are a little larger. And I keep those there that we are going to be reading this year. And then this basket is just kind of a basket of resources. It has a reader that one of my kids uses, and it also has the MP3 CDs for our science, this little castle book, our scrunch maps. Um, people are always losing the rulers, and so I just keep them in there. So that's just kind of our little resources basket, quick grab stuff. And then right here is where I keep our art and music folders and I just keep them in this depending on what we are studying. So then like for example this one we were learning about Vermeer and we were studying the girl with the pearl earring and the concept that we were looking at was color. So I'm able to quickly grab this and use it to um, go over everything with. Now underneath we have um, just some other curriculum and resources that we use, mainly language arts type stuff, some books that we use for music, and things like that. And then here we have our little Lazy Susan of Supplies, which are a little bit in disarray right now. They've actually been staying in place pretty well, but I shared this in another video. I love this little carousel. I love that you can take these out of the little carousel, and what's nice is that if you are using just scissors and glue, you can just grab the scissors and glue out and then place them back, or you could do them as individual kids' supplies. But I love this thing. They had one similar at Target, but this one was bigger and just a lot better quality, and I'm glad I picked this one up instead. I grabbed it on Amazon. 
And then this box right here is just a big box of crayons with colored pencils mixed in as well. I used to do separate supplies for everybody and that just turned into a train wreck. <laughs> there were things everywhere and then people's supplies would go missing and all that kind of stuff. So community supplies are where it's at in our house. So underneath here, this is all of my teacher books and I just piled them all in here because when they stand up like this, it's really hard to tell what's what and it's also not really good for the bindings, the spiral bindings to do that. So I just lay them in there flat. This is my older boy's student notebooks, their planners, as well as the um, spelling notebooks that my kids use and our spelling curriculum. And then this is my little shelf here. This is our morning menus. I keep my planner in here typically. This is the little family guide for our history and that is set up like a planner as well. And that's what's in there. Now this shelf is a well-loved shelf. I shared these in one of my videos. These were around three dollars from Target and I absolutely love these things. So these house our little supplies for busy kiddos. So um, my kindergartner and preschoolers especially they like to get out either the kinetic sand to play with or this one right here is I believe this might be yep magnetiles and then this one right here is bristle blocks. And they typically, I try to limit when they can play with these to um, school time and quiet time because uh, it makes them more, it makes them want to play with them more when they don't get to play with them all the time. So that is mostly how we organize our school. But as you can see, the individual subjects are not here. Um, that is because we actually use my kids' latchmate boxes for that. And I will take you over so you guys can see that. All right, here's my Monica closet. No, I'm kidding. It's actually really organized in here. You just can't see it because these are in front of it. But during the week when we're doing school, we actually take these out and we keep them over here in this area between that chair and this table right there. It's just on the weekends and when we have people over, I like to have them kind of put away so they're out of the way. But they have their individual subjects in their little latchmate boxes. So in the morning when we do school, they know to come grab their latchmate box, come to the table and slide it underneath their chair until it's time to start on the individual subjects. So that is kind of how we do things in here. I know you can't see it, but there's like supplies like this is just some manipulatives and this is a craft box and then there's educational games back there as well. And then of course their backpacks are hanging on those cheapy plastic hangers for pants. But hey, you know what? It works. I am thrifty in that manner. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to buy things if I have something that will work for the purpose I need it for. So that's why I'm using those. So that is our homeschool space. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this tour. Like I said, make sure that you check out the playlist down below so you can see other people's homeschool spaces and hopefully glean some ideas. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on future videos. Thank you again, Tony, for hosting this collaboration and I'll see you all on future videos. Thanks so much, guys, and have a blessed day.